Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to be talking about some watch list changes, some sealed games of Avengers Forever we played, maybe even answer some listener questions and do a little ooh-ah Black Adam roundtable review. This is episode 439. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Google, back some more. Let's attack him. Wow, wow, wow. Mileage for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. I mean, like always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, I'm just wearing my sunglasses at night. Well, know, so I can. So I can hide. It's how it goes. I oh, wear my sunglasses <laughs> like at night so I can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That sounds right. That sounds correct. All right, Simeon, what made you happy this week? And we can do our Marvel uh, Snap check-in. Uh, what made me happy this week was Cool Stuff went live with their um, Avengers Forever. Uh, and I, I don't know if anyone else noticed Single. this, but... Yeah, they're, they're singles, I should say, yeah. Um, so if you wanted to pick and choose, that was the best way to do it. You can also still, uh, last I checked, yeah, you can still pick up the Play at Home kit, which comes with the Rick Jones card, which I think I've seen people selling those online, like on eBay for like 30 bucks, which is wild because it comes oh, wow. in a $17 play at home kit so uh people have been selling or maybe maybe i'm mistaken but i think people have been selling those alone for more than the play at home kit but it comes with that ant man and yada yada um but no like they they opened plenty so they had plenty of uh singles and uh generics were the main thing uh but also like not too bad on like certain figures like i really wanted to marmu red he's only 105 which I'm probably going to wait. Hopefully he goes down. Maybe he sells out. Who knows? Maybe I sell out. We'll never know. Oh, uh, but uh, no, they, they went live with their singles. Um, and like a certain other big named, not to be named, uh, online retailer, uh, not doing any Avengers forever for whatever reason. Not, be named, yeah. not listed Good. at all, which hmm. almost feel like somebody should have given us like a heads up. Like some other podcast could have told us that that was going to be the case, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Actually, <laughs> it is wild that uh, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, um, yeah, cool stuff is the only the only one that I'm aware of that I constantly go to and check that has all the singles up, and so yeah, um, that made me happy. Also, yeah, saw Black Adam. We'll do that at the end of the show, but fun movie, right. spoiler free review is fun movie don't get your hopes too high um but yes fun movie uh and then yeah other than that uh new season of snap that's been fun that's right it was right. it was nice to drop down a couple of rankings only to realize i have no clue what to play anymore and uh i think last episode i talked about my discard deck has not been popping off as easily as it was. I think people figured oh. out pretty quickly that like that's like the if they see you discard Hella, then they're like, okay, this guy's gonna lose, and so they just like snap as soon as you discard Hella, not realizing I'm too stupid to retreat. So jokes on. <laughs> um, but yeah, Enjoy all eight of my from, cubes. I went from level like sixty something down to like thirty. Built my yeah. way up to level fifty. Uh, just to get like more credits or whatever to like uh, unlock more cards, and now I have dropped down from fifty to like forty-seven. So um, I'm in the middle of trying to figure out what to do. Move decks are still strong, although you know it's really fun to do against a move deck called What's that? Uh, What's when that? they it, they're kind of hard to track down. They're kind of hard to like figure out where they're going to be. But uh, using Shang-Chi to 
just kill their vulture or yeah. using a gambit to snipe their uh, multiple man early. Ooh, okay. so good. That's not good. I'm good. <laughs> like I, I super screwed up earlier today. They um, running move, and then they put a ton of stuff in Gamma Lab. It's like ah, I didn't put any cards in Gamma Lab, but I had Shang Chi. Cool. I'm gonna just kill all your Hulks. And last turn, I put Shang Chi in Gamma Lab, and I'm like, oh, I'm dumb. They what does a move deck always do last turn? They play Heimdall. Oh, and yep. Shang Chi kills nothing, and I'm like, no. They actually got me. Yeah. I I, again, a you move really deck telegraphs to... Heimdall. Ninety years in the like that was all on oh, me for not knowing. That's why was Heimdall left. Like Ian has it in a deck that's not a move deck. Um, that he's been, like, talking yeah. about. And yeah, Heimdall, regardless of the deck, does good work on turn six. Your yeah. opponent, especially outside of a move deck, like in a move deck, you can probably see it coming. Sometimes yeah. I just like hope they don't have it. I'm just like, I really hope they don't have it because otherwise I lose. Um, but outside of a move deck, he's still like an eight attack and uh, or eight whatever. Atta- I think it's attack. I don't know. Uh, but he's eight attack and... Yeah. Um, just like shifts the whole board so like you could be winning at two locations and then your opponent just like piles everything into the like far left. Uh, have you seen yeah. the location that everyone like at the end of every turn the highest card like they get into like a brawl and the highest cost card, yes highest dude whatever, card. Uh, whatever warrior falls that's yeah. an awesome hilarious it's oh awesome. yeah it's it's the yeah part of the black panther thing that location's awesome because, like, not only is it like if you have more than one card there, whichever card you have that's highest there wins. It's yeah, every turn your opponent's like card also enters the fray. So if they have a card there, so it's it's just funny seeing like turn six like an infinite just wipe like everything out of that location or something. Yeah, that's dope. I love that. Uh, but yeah, like Warrior Falls is super fun, super fun. I realize that now, even if are like winning and your like highest card on your side wins it's still going to kill your lowest card on your side yeah. too like that thing's still going to die I'm like, oh, when i was no. reading it i was like hmm is it that way like is that the way it be but yeah, yeah it is it is it like is, one yeah, one cool. turn i was like okay well, let's get everybody i got i had four cards there and ant-man was one of them he did not make it and i was like well, <laughs> well i guess uh you live and you learn i saw uh, yeah. somebody um scarlet witch into that location they had three cards and i had nothing there I think they changed it from TVA to oh. Warrior Falls, and so it was like they lost like seven, seven power in one turn because of that. That's rough, especially when they were like uh, trying to prolong the game, keep yeah. that good power like going, and it's like TVA nah, just die, also bro. kind of a terrible um, location. There's yeah, several, there's several locations that I just really don't care for, and TVA is one. Just- the one that replaces your whole deck with 10 random cards is pretty bad. The one that swaps your turn six deck, whatever is in your hand. The with turn your six swap, I, I kind of like, you know, only because I always try to make sure I have like nothing in my hand or like just yeah. one card. It depends you on know? my deck, but yeah, yeah it is definitely true. been times where I have like the perfect, I have the perfect turn six play. Everything's gone correct. And then, I have to swap hands, and I'm like, ugh. I Dude, that is that tough. Do. I I know if like I'm already winning, I'm already doing like fine. Whatever. It's like there's one turn six where all I had was blue marvel, and then they gave me their hand. They were running a destroyer deck because they had like a what's her face armor on one location. Oh sure. And then I was winning the location that he had his armor on, and then he passed me. Basically, I mean that turn six, I got past his destroyer, and I was like, oh well, don't mind. And then he just instantly retreated uh, yeah. after he saw that he just had like blue marvel, and I was like, oh man, well, that's the way it goes. I've seen <laughs> a lot funny. of uh, the Cosmo destroyer combo going on. Ooh, no reveal. That makes sense. That's cool. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't do on. Uh... Reveal that big effect, 16. So, yeah, yeah. No oh, destroyer is an stuff. 18. Is he an 18? Yeah, he Ugh, gives you like bro. Cosmo and Destroyer alone have like a 21 at that location. So that's gnarly. Um, and then they've been boosting that whichever Wakanda location it is right now, where you get plus two to yeah, sure. He's loud. Yeah, but um, it's pretty. Solid. All right, good, good Marvel snap check in. <laughs> What made me happy last week was kind of like the same stuff Simeon said. Played, I played a little bit of 
least day, Avengers Forever sealed. I got my boy John Walker, U.S. Agent LE. I was happy about that. Got that map. I uh, saw Black Panther and Black Adam last week, which was just a ton of freaking fun. It was also my birthday and had a good time hanging out with people and all that fun stuff. Also last week, weird what made me happy, we replaced our refrigerator. It's uh, it just old, gross, and I think poisoning us. And we got a new <laughs> refrigerator. And the water thing is much faster than the old one. And if you know me, you know I drink a lot of water. I'm constantly refilling yeah, uh, my water there jug. For like five minutes. Yeah, and it's like, man, it's pretty quick. You know, like on the old one, I'd be like, all right, let's play a game of Marvel Snap. And it might be done by the end of it, you know. Now it's like, all right, boom, there's the water. I love that. Quality of life change, what it's all about. So I had a great week. It was a ton of fun. But uh, what else? That's about it. Marvel Snap. I'm running. This is actually really fun. Pretty fun deck. I know. I'm running a Thor and Odin little father son deck is what I like to call it. So Thor is just oh, really yeah. cool. I just I just think Thor is a ton of like fun. But what he does is he's a three cost four power. And then on reveal you shuffle Mjolnir into your deck. Then Mjolnir is on reveal give Thor six power. Uh, so all this is an on reveal deck with Thor thrown into the mix slash some like anti stuff thrown in the mix so Killmonger and Shang-Chi are there to mess people up uh, and then I used to have what's her face Crystal because she would take my hand put it back on my deck reshuffle deal me a new hand to try to get Mjolnir back in as soon as possible but then after playing like 10 like 10 games to test it out and do little tweaks I only used Crystal like once and I was yeah. like, maybe I don't need her. She's a hard you know? middle play. Like, yeah, and that's yeah. another thing. She asked me played middle. Um, but I have Adam Warlock, who I can typically try to be winning one lane most of the time. If I put him and Thor or something in a lane, Adam Warlock lets me, if I'm winning at this location, draw an extra card, which is really yeah, nice. He's good. So that helps me go through my cards. I have Storm and White Tiger. Storm shuts off location. White Tiger could potentially just also tiger there and it's just kind of like a normal odin reveal with uh you know white tiger iron heart but uh cool thing is mjolnir is a zero cost so i wait until the last turn to play mjolnir and then i can also odin on mjolnir to give thor 12 power to make him a like 16 hour card which is super nice i say i don't think you have him yet but you know what makes that deck really really funny because <laughs> probably had wong the, I've, I've had this played against me yeah wong and arnim zola make that oh, dude. stupid that's because, what i want <laughs> so uh, you bad put wong you put thor uh you drop mjolnir and then you arnim zola as like your fourth card there and arnim zola will take thor and mjolnir occasionally and it'll take the thor already boosted from mjolnir boost him again from the new mjolnir so like it'll place two thors they'll already have that original boost so it'll be 10 and then Mjolnir will get placed and boost them again. And then the second Mjolnir will get placed and boost them again. It's super gross. Arnim Zola um, is actually disgusting. And Arnim I want Zola that. with Wong want so bad. has so many stupid combos that it like have just completely. When I first saw it like taking off, I was like, oh gosh, like yeah. this is it's just nothing you can do about it. Like if they get yeah. lucky and they get the right cards in hand, Wong is a hard play because he's a turn four. He's a rough play, so unless there's that, like, yeah. uh, all cards cost one less, or uh, cards, like, reverse their cost and power. Ooh, which is really good. There's another, like, person I want to mess around with playing is Mr. Negative. Oh, no. I don't Especially have him, in a reveal deck, right? He's... Like, cause he's awesome, because he instantly makes everybody, they switch their cost and power, right? Yeah. So for like Ironheart, who's a zero power, three cost, she's now a zero cost, three power, which is nutty. Uh, what's her face? White Tiger is now a one cost, five power. That like it's just yeah. so cool. So um, I really, Professor really want X Mr. Is a three cost, five power. Yeah. So you can drop you know? him turn three when nobody expects him. Uh, I do. Well, I think Mr. Negative is like a four cost card. But, Mr. Or, Negative like, like, is a four. He's, he's a three, four, four. He's four. Yeah. But, like you have to make all your big plays. Jubilee, Sandman. Yeah, luckily, yeah, luckily, you've got. Then you, I mean, but you then it's so have cheap. A bunch with all of this energy that, that you yeah, have, you yeah. Just, I mean, there's several people that are like a zero cost or like a zero attack that become like a zero cost as well. Um, so like, yeah, it's 
turn five, you can mess people up pretty good. Yeah. Uh, pretty he's, awesome yeah, he's something that I've been wanting for a while to to mess around with. Um, there are just I also so really many cards want... I don't don't have that I just want to mess around with. You know, I my pool three decks. It's like, oh, here's Mojo. Oh, oh thanks yeah, yeah. for nothing. Cool. Like whatever, man. You know, Mojo is like, almost never this. worth trying to Dude, play. I, I mean, maybe there's garbage. something with Mojo and Doc Ock, but probably not. I don't know. Eh, eh. There's maybe something, I guess, but so garbage, Simeon. So like, I don't have Doc Ock either. I don't have like a ton of really cool pool three cards that I want to mess around building. Mostly, like Wong would be huge. Freaking Patriot. I'll complain until the end of days, but I want Patriot so bad. So bad. Anyways. That's so, uh, that's Marvel Snap. I'm enjoying my my father son Thor Odin deck. I now realize, saying this, we don't have a Loki game, right? Like Loki's just not in the game. Is he not? All. I don't think so. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Actually, the biggest thing that actually kind of made me happy this week, uh, while hanging out with Ian this weekend on my birthday, we went to the Marvel Snap database and we looked at just every single variant that there was, like period. We decided that like Nova, Nightcrawler, and Red Skull have the best overall just variants. Like no real terrible ones. And, like you know, like their pixel looks one like looks fine. Chibis like look fine, and their all their other like random ones probably look the best. Like overall, for some reason, oh, Red Skull's null variant. Ooh. I haven't seen any null variants, but Red Skull's null. Harley. It's a yeah. Really, what's really, is that like the which? What's this one? Is this um like the sixteen ten? He's like in like a 1602. Templar outfit. 1602. 1602. Yeah, there's... So it's so weird. They have 1602 variants. None of them are actually characters that were in 1602. They have like <laughs> not, Medusa. Not, not that I've seen And so all these far, other yeah. people. But they don't have like Rajaz, Captain America, or like Spider-Man, or the X-Men, you know, from like 1602. Or like Nick Fury and Daredevil that were really cool. It's like, nah, it's like Medusa and Cosmo. And I'm like, that's just a dog. What do you mean? I don't get... Like, what? What is happening? But yeah, like... I think we decided the worst so it's like pixels has like the most variants because every single card has like a pixel version of it right and i think we decided that the worst variants that existed were either like the steampunk ones because those were just all really bad and also like steampunk is so i mean it's dated in the sense that yes it's old but also it's not popular in the sense that it's dated now um like between steampunk and like one other one the chibis were kind of like if you like chibi then it's fine but for the most part i was like yeah have you ever uh gotten sentry randomly in your hand i've never gotten sentry i did not know he was a card that existed actually yeah sentry um maybe he hasn't been like fully released or something like i think he's like uh galactus i've only seen him played once but he's like giganto where he can't like so giganto can only be played at the left location Sentry right. can't be played at the right location, so you can play a middle or left. Oh, interesting. He's okay. a four four cost, ten energy, and he adds a negative eight power void to the right location. Ooh, that's is, so good. He is very good. That's uh, it's on reveal too. Cost? So he adds the void to you, right? not your opponent. Yeah, it's it's adds it to your okay. location. That makes um, sense. That's like I was like that can't be balanced. No, now that no, now it, I get it's it. not. Yeah, sense. it's not. Giving you a ten and then also the like hobgoblining them. I'm like, that's um, insane. But you play that with like Carnage or okay. somebody else. I mean, like the Hood. I've seen the Hood. Right, 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 right. Uh, Beast is another figure or another another card Ooh, that I really, I actually really enjoy playing. Me. Oh man, he's so good. You play him with like any anyone that has on <laughs> reveal effects at one cost. You play yeah. them. You drop Beast. Then you him play them like, again ship. over and over. Be really good too to drop a bunch of zeros. Yeah, ship. It'd be really solid, especially like I'm Iceman, Yondu. Yeah, Iceman, Yondu. Um, Core Ironheart. Make her only cost two. Yeah, Core. Yeah, yeah. Drop solid. Ironheart twice. <laughs> All right, that's enough Marvel Snap. We talked like 20, 30 minutes yeah. on Marvel Snap. <laughs> we are a hero clicks. A podcast. hero clicks podcast. We yeah. Here's who would have thunk. So, Sealed, Avengers Forever Sealed. Uh, Friday, I ended up playing actually a few Battle Royals of Avengers Forever. I oh, think nice. it's a pretty fun Battle Royal set. So, if you guys end up playing, it's like some BRs with friends. I think maybe the Florida events, if they're doing BRs, Avengers Forever is going to be the newest set. Very, very, very fun. 
obviously things that will absolutely clap you and ruin your day literally in battle royals are like almost all the super <laughs> rares hulk iron hulk man literally clap yeah hulk uh, she hulk winter hulk all the, like anybody like that just annihilates you in a br we did not have that we pulled a ton of rares in our battle royals and they're all pretty fine i will say crimson dynamo and then the uncommon wonder man both worth i would say a first turn pick wonder man being a nine click long dial with mystics and Crimson Dynamo giving you protected outwit for defense powers is pretty huge. But for what I played for Sealed, uh, out of my two boosters, this is what I think was probably the best team I could build. I did completely ignore Novar because I would not feel ballsy enough to play him, honestly. I'm like, I don't just want that kid to die. So I played Crimson Dynamo at 75, Doctor Strange at 40, Uncommon Wonder Man at 100, Gorilla Man at 60, and then last 25 points is the 25-point Black Panther. Pretty fun team. I had two leaderships. Uh, his non-theme protected outwit on all my defense powers, which gave Doctor Strange and Wonder Man really good because they both have Super Senses ESD, and then Wonder Man also has Invuln on top of that. I have a TK with Doctor Strange. I have Mystics with Doctor Strange and Wonder Man. I have Perplex with Doctor Strange, Gorilla Man. It's a very range-heavy team. Doctor Strange, Crimson Dynamo, and uh, Wonder Man are all super range-heavy. So then that's why Gorilla Man was there, to just tie people up, make them be locked down with a 20 defense, Gorilla Man. And then Black Panther was also there because he could trigger Gorilla Man's follow-up, which was the whole one because they both have Wakanda. So, yeah, yeah, it was a pretty fun team. I lost two out of my three games. It ended up not being that good, especially when Grant's team is Double Mantis, Super Rare She-Hulk, Blue Marvel Rare, Reptil, and Doctor Strange. So if you guys don't didn't put it together from that, that team has two Outwits, four Perplexes, Telekinesis, and an almost nigh-unkillable Reptil who had to take a, a Mystic's damage to die, which is still an opposing effect, so he still had to roll for it. Uh, I had killed him twice before, but it was ironically on the own on the own mystics uh is how he died which is hilarious so grant i think easily had the best team there oh it was also a theme team by the way so we had three theme probs it's so theme. yeah yeah that was all theme they're all avengers wow yes i know right uh bothered me mantis i i was like mantis has avengers and he was like yeah she does and i looked and i'm like yeah sure enough mantis has avengers that classic Very. avenger mantis yeah i know right <laughs> um, Blue Marvel at the 50 point line. I was like, oh, he's a one for three, whatever. But I mean, that stop click, running shot, pulse wave, force blast. He's targeted by a ranged attack. You heal him one click. You remove an action token from him. It's like, dang. Dude, with uh, the stop click, I'm just like, ugh. Just stop regen invuln super senses, which is hard to get through. And guessed, by the way. Um, yeah, it was a tough, tough team. The fact that I even scored as many yeah. points as I did against it really rough there was there was a thread about that blue uh, marvel on facebook that i thought about doing a thread dead redemption ooh, on because yeah uh people were like so when being attacked by ranged attacks blue marvel just can't die right like with no additional things other than ranged attacks and people were offering like well you know there's chase beast who can outwit him there's people who can get rid of stop clicks there's like follow-up attacks and this and that and they're like, like a bunch of the commenters were like but if it's only ranged attacks and we're not talking about additional elements, he can't ever die, right? Because he, he would hit his stop click from the ranged attack. And right, every time and then after resolutions. Yes. And that, like, that is, that that is correct, but that means yes. absolutely nothing in the game of hero clicks because no one would play like that. No one would be like, ah, oh, right. I can only shoot. How can I ever kill this guy? Yeah. You know, so it's, it's a in, nothing. Inherently, bird. you know, not every figure can inherently. Basically, every figure can make a close combat attack. So yeah. fret not, dear viewer, <laughs> dear listener. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say, like, when building a team, always have, um, for every, like, two range attackers you have, have somebody that's capable of doing a solid close attack. Right. Uh, you don't need, Stop. like, a full movement charge. You don't need to invest a ton of points. But you should have somebody that can make a close attack. Because, yeah, close attacks are important. Yeah. Um, the team that I pulled for Avengers Forever, uh, I got pretty lucky. So the first pack, I can't remember exactly what was in the second one, but the first pack had uh, Captain America. That's the common <laughs> zero, zero, 001. 
It had Winter Soldier, Black Panther, Bucky Barnes, and Prodigy. So just in that pack alone, I was like, oh, I've got like the the, like, <laughs> the soldier pack, I guess. Yeah, I like that. Um, I only ended up playing three of the characters from that pack. Uh, I was going to play Bucky and Winter Soldier, but then I was the more I was thinking about it, I was like, I'm just going to play Bucky because he's like the powerhouse of the two. Um, yeah, he is. So, yes, I, I played Captain America, even though it kind of wasn't like probably the best call. Um, I played Captain America at 90 points, and then I played the Bucky with his running shot ESD and enhancement at 40 points. So that's his mid-dial, starts on click four. Uh, they gave me two solid range attackers and then boost Captain America's attack or damage up to uh, four just on that alone. Um, and then I played the Black Panther from that pack. So I played him at the 25 point line where he's got leadership, charge, stealth, flurry, but only if he's in hindering terrain. Uh, makes him really just like a cheap leadership, but also he's still a 10 for three. We talked about him in our set review, why that's like a really solid point value. Uh, there's plenty of stuff that could be like filler for that. Um, my other pack, I had uh, Kzar. I had both Wondermans, which was pretty unique. I had a uh, Hydra Officer and then Maria Hill. So pretty solid second pack as well. Yeah. Um, so from that, I ended up doing Kzar. So obviously he's... I didn't pull any, like, TK or anything, but he's kind of the next best thing to cheat, like, some extra movement out of people. Uh, getting Cap to be able to move, yeah. like, five squares and then running shot for another five. Or same for Bucky, move four and then running shot for another four. Or T'Challa. T'Challa's terribly sad three-speed charge. Um, goes up mm. to a six-speed charge, I guess. Uh, but, yeah. On top of that, I get to make a Zabu bystander every time I hit a leadership roll, I believe. Yeah. Every time I hit a leadership roll, I can generate another one if I haven't already, which is great. Uh, then he's also just got traded leadership, so that's, I think, the second leadership that this team has. Yeah, because Cap doesn't actually yeah. have it. He's got... Tra oh, no, he, had, he does have traded, traded leadership, leadership. Yeah. ESD. So it's the third leadership. Um, and then... To go along with that, I almost made a theme team, but I had to miss out on like a few things just because I the better figures did not have the right keywords. I think Kazar is worth breaking like any yeah, soldier. Yeah, he really yeah. is. It was it was sad because I like him and Black Panther have ruler warrior uh, Wakanda for whatever reason. Even though like Savage Land is way and more no, I don't. Be given Wakanda's to like must have, people like, spent, like not like, a seeing... stint in Wakanda <laughs> helped out. Yeah, T'Challa was like, like "Hey, you have a tiger." Wakanda. I'm like, you know, part of like the Black Panther Guild, whatever yeah, bloodline. <laughs> we're we're both big cat people. <laughs> like, might as well hang out. I don't know, um, but yeah. So I almost had a theme team, but then I, I threw on Hydra Officer, which really helped break whatever theme I was going to possibly have. Um, he's just another leadership. And then he's got stealth blades with that uh, generate a bystander or not bystander, but the Hydra agent. I did not pull a Hydra agent in that pack, but I'll what rip. I did pull was two Wondermans. So I played the common Wonder Man with the uh, plus five ionic resurrection trait. Ooh, that's cool. I like yeah. that. So like I I was really cool, really glad that that like both of those Wondermen were in the same uh booster. I actually had not seen for whatever reason. I didn't watch most of Scott Porter's unboxings. I was just looking at like the dials and stuff. I had not seen most of these sculpts up close and I really like the Ionic I like the Ionic uh Wonderman sculpt. I really like the Red Skull sculpt. Like man, I did yeah. like a did like a double take when I saw him because like there's a lot of detail on that sculpt. I don't know what his gun is doing, but like it's a really cool gun. Uh, there's actually just a lot of really solid sculpts in this set, and I'm I'm sad that I <laughs> took me so long to see them. Uh, but yeah, uh, team didn't do as good as I thought. So yeah. it was mostly just you know I have Hydra, I have Masters of Evil, I have like three, four maybe close combat attackers. And then yeah. I've got 
three-ish range combat attackers, depending on, like, where I'm at. Um, so I had, like, all the stuff to do those things, but then, you know, Cap can't see through stealth, so, like, Outwit doesn't do a whole lot unless you get adjacent, which doesn't help him out top dial. Um, yeah. Same with, like, Bucky's, like, Psychic Blast isn't awesome against people with stealth. So it ended up being, like, mostly, you know, close combat kind of stuff and then just uh, getting, like, easily picked apart because of the lack of reducers. Although I will say Wonder Man being able to turn into... Let me double check what... So he turns into double... Or he turns into like like last uncommon click. on uncommon, click nine. Yeah. yeah, so that's... He's the hypersonic 11 for 2 with regen, and he's got a close combat expert, so he's a 12 for 3 with precision strike. Um, you also heal him half of a d6 roll when you place him on that click. So he can potentially be a charge, right. super strength, outwit piece. Uh, most of the time he ends up on that hypersonic line, though, somewhere along the like hypersonic line. But you could still, just when he gets to that, also just regen him that same like that next turn that you get and yeah. uh also just not a bad call because yeah the worst you're gonna get is like a 12 for three and that's like i don't know i think that's very much worth the solid points it's solid but yeah i thought it was a really fun uh a really fun set for sealed as far as uh like what i saw when i pulled stuff i think it works out um I didn't have to play against any crazy like Hulk clap and stuff, but um, oh, that's yeah, good. I didn't have to play against it either. But honestly, all my games besides Grant's game, which is literally insane, pretty solid. Yeah, I really like. I will say probably my biggest thing that you that is an auto play and sealed is got to be Crimson Dynamo for a bunch of reasons. Yeah. I mean, the biggest is that honestly he's a four damage print. That's really helpful. Like killing those mantises in one shot is so freaking nice. As like I do three damage here, and then uh, she got super senses to roll. And it's like, well, three damage here, but super senses, and it's just like, no, nope, this is kind of painful. Like, kinda, uh, I kind of hate this, you know. So like having to get rid of that, and it's like, okay, she missed it once, then she's dead. You know, his invincible is also huge to pick off all of the mystics stuff uh improved targeting hindering terrain for like what simeon was saying like all of these stuff that is in this game is super duper annoying and i hate it so like yeah improved targeting hindering terrain super super helps out invincible improved targeting hindering terrain running shot pen blast four damage and then honestly it's it's the last thing is also just huge is the protected outwit for his defense power and adjacent people's defense powers is really 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 nice so Crimson Animo's dope. He's gotta be my number one seal. I mean, obviously besides like Hulk, but for like a uncommon, easily worth tossing on like every team. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. Um just to tag all along with that, uh the video has not dropped yet. We me and Calder are both doing separate unboxing videos just because of the way timing worked out. Yeah. Um But I was keeping the trend that we started with uh X of Swords, so the trend that is literally only one once so far. It's not really a trend if it's only once. Uh, but I forgot when I started filming to announce that like the first super rare pulled will go to somebody that comments on oh, the yeah. video. Um, but the first booster that I unboxed was a super rare. So if you comment on the video when it comes out, uh, that first super rare was Immortus. So Immortus will be yeah, just double checking. He is a super rare. So, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, whoa, got really quiet there for that's, a second. Yeah. Oh, no. It's hard because the Avengers Assemble one was a rare, and I have them sitting next to each other right now. Um, oh, sure. But, yes, yeah, so the, the first super rare was a Mortis, and then I got halfway through the unboxing, and I was like, you know what? I probably won't play this Hulk, so the Gamma Clap Hulk is also going to be going to one of oh, the commenters nice. for the video. Um, but, yeah, the, so if you comment on that video when it comes out, you get a chance at one of those two, possibly both, if the algorithm so chooses to pick you twice. Uh, make sure, yeah, I guess, make sure to watch those videos and then uh, comment on them for entries to win. Right and uh, we'll keep doing this stuff as long as people keep uh, wanting figures, I guess. Keep enjoying it, you know. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the 
watch list slash the erratas that happened last week. Results. All right, cool, guys. I, I don't think we mentioned on the podcast when the watch list happened and what was going to be on the watch list. Uh, we have speculated before about certain characters on it, though. I mean, certain figures about what we would ch- about them. Pretty, I would say I'm pretty happy with everything that happened because it all, to me, kind of makes sense. So yep. I'll just, we'll just go uh, back and forth on the watch list here. So first up was the L.E. Chainsaw Wonder Woman. The effect that was reviewed was once per game when a friendly standard character would be KO'd, including Wonder Woman. They instead turn that figure to their last non-KO click, roll D6, and heal him equal to half the result, protect the wave. Some things that they changed, Rata is once per game for all friendly characters with this trait. A friendly character would be KO'd, including Wonder Woman. You may instead turn that figure to their last non-KO click, and then roll a D6, and heal him equal to half the result. Because if you had just a team full of them, it would be nigh unkillable because yeah. it, the, each trait would trigger for each person. So instead, it's once per game for all front gears with this trait. Much just easier, so you're not swarming the board with all these Wonder Women. Basically, borderline impossible to kill. So that is just straight up like a, this figure is broken, a.k.a. not as we intended it to work. And now it is fixed, which I really, really, really like. Yeah. Uh, so next up. It's just a needed fix. Um, needed fix, yeah. Next up is... The organized play X of Swords 035 Magic. So the effect, of course, is the I'll kick the door open, charge, phase, and teleport. When magic moves after resolutions, generate a stepping disc marker in the square she began her movement in. Friendly characters within two squares of a stepping disc marker can use free. Place this character into an unoccupied square with a stepping disc marker. At the beginning of your turn, remove all stepping disc markers. On the surface, this does not seem like a problem. The only time it becomes a problem is when you run two of these magics and you TK one, like a few, you know, carry up TK, whatever, uh, give her a sidestep. And then she, she does like a move and the one back in your starting area does a move. And then you have people that can just free cross the entire map. So like your whole team can cross the entire map for very little investment. So the errata is charge phasing teleport when magic moves after resolutions generate a stepping disc marker in the square she began her movement in that's all the same friendly characters within two squares of the stepping disc marker can use free place this character into an unoccupied square with that stepping so that's the the key change with that stepping disc marker um, instead of with a stepping disc marker at the beginning of your turn remove all stepping disc markers so it is unique to each magic now so mm-hmm. their explanation was adding a figure to the watch list before it has a chance to perform in modern is not something we do lightly but we felt magic's potential for enabling cross map alpha strikes was too great to ignore with this change the stepping discs she generates will only allow friendly characters to teleport to the disc giving them the effect not across the entire map people are calling this not like so like they're saying like she just got like nuked she's trash but right. i I remember playing 75 point infinity for this ev- exact effect. Like it's not called side. Yeah. Step. It's place adjacent. Yeah. It's like a place adjacent. So like this doesn't seem big for single base characters, but for two by twos, placing a two by two within two squares of a stepping disc marker, like from two squares away to a, uh, an occupied square with that stepping disc marker, like, that like that's quite a like decent move and i think i can't remember exactly i think that magic has like a 35 point line right she's like he honestly i have no idea <laughs> let me I yeah at I, i'm pretty sure that um let's see what was she she was 035 so oh she's 45 points so she's she's 30 points less than that infinity that i used to play for that exact purpose um, and then she's got, yeah, combat reflexes, defend, toughness, leadership. So, yeah, like, I think it's still highly playable. And, like, I've played teams based around that kind of thing. This is something where it's like, oh, it's like, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really make sense. But then, like, your opponent all of a sudden moves uh, Galactus for free. And he's able to shoot the entire map, turn, like, one. And it, like, it seems Ouch. like a bigger, bigger effect than, uh... Right. 
but yeah, definitely a good fix. There's no reason to like have in like especially like in silver with like Wendigos being able to free be on the other side of the map turn one would be nuts um but yeah for anything else as well just like a free drop them in your opponent's starting area seems like a bad thing yeah i'm cool with what they did with magic i could see some potential shenanigans uh face that used to do she worked for mojo spiral oh yeah kind of like spiral across the map yeah. all that nutty stuff the yeah and the x-men one that yeah had the, uh the portal, portal discs or whatever, or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah i was happy yeah. to see none of those crazy i believe also caught errated twice maybe maybe it was I, only I once i think but... you get errated twice though yeah I think you're right that was yeah so these uh, next characters well i'll mention them but they got no change at all so mad jim they're looking at the crooked market where you can do someone and swap their equipment slash auto equipment auto equip them with a power action they reviewed it and they're like nice nah, fine in Iron Man, they did the thing with all the scraps, with taking the one unavoidable with the two scrap on the card. They looked at it and they were like, nah, it's fine. Scarab, again, they looked at his whole raw line of fire from people that have an object or equipped characters, all that stuff. They were like, uh, he is also fine. And we finally, we get to Thanos here. Thanos gets a change, and I'm very happy with this change. I think this is a fine change. So, the effect being reviewed is the only thing Thanos basically has on his entire dial. Uh, his big important trait, anyway, is behold the ultimate power. This is his whole rolling a d6 for choosing, you know, one of his gems. So it read before at the beginning of your turn, roll a d6 and choose a number of infinity gem effects equal to the half of the result from the list below. Thanos using the chosen effects until your next turn. Here's what they changed. All right. At the beginning of your turn, you roll a d6. You choose a number of Infinity Gem effects equal to half the result from the list below. That's the same, but then it goes that were not chosen last turn. Then Thanos can use the chosen effects until your next turn. So, completely changes the way people play Thanos. Kind of, sort of, but also a little bit not really. But it takes away, to me, the toxic element or the unfun way to play against him. Or it's the constant... Mind control, power, I have high crazy stats, I mind control you, I deal you damage, you know, I mess you up, I free phase away, you know, I TK up, TK up, mind control for free, phase back, you know, and it's just like, well, this sucks, you know, and now it gets rid of that monotonous, boring way to play Thanos instead of choosing the right. same darn thing every single turn. And also, it just you know? forces them to play him, like, for the other options that he right. gives. Like, I don't think anyone no. ever picked the power gem from him. Well, power, I would say so. Close combat expert, range common expert. I know for sure, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone choose reality, which is barrier smoke cloud. Use both is free to only generate one marker. I've never noticed that yeah. one. Those much. are the two weaker ones for sure. Probably the biggest one was always like the space free phasing, mind, mind control, and like, what was it? Time? Pro yeah, yeah props. It gives them super time. senses. Yeah. But people were always picking with this guy. I mean, especially so, prior to his improved targeting being changed oh, right, um, yeah. being able to prob stuff through like what 12 squares of yeah. stuff i think this is a fine change again it makes thanos not as like kind of i'm not going to say brain dead you know just turn your brain off here's how you play him but like that's kind of you know again no offense to thanos players but like it's basically that's that's how you played him you yeah, waited kind of for an opening you did whatever it was kind of yeah, it was kind of like a point and click dude um, no, I'm not saying there weren't some hairier like things where you had to make some easy tough no. choices, but now you actually are like actively thinking about what you're going to do this round and then what you're going to do next round. And there's nothing wrong at all about that. I still think he's super playable. I think he's just not as easy. He's not as point click as you said. Yeah, Thanos like fits the same bill as like Hugh Mind to me, where yeah. anyone could play him like as as he was when like first revealed or whatever prior to Aratus. Anyone yeah. could play him and like point and click and do well um it still took a very skilled player to actually win tournaments with him because you know the later days of unimind most people knew how to pop a uni um yep. people still struggle with like killing a thanos just because like you said um all the free phasing and uh super senses prob like all the kind of like shenanigans um i will say like turn one thanos doesn't have to he doesn't have to pick a number of like infinity gems that he's going to use the next turn. So he still has like his turn two 
you know, phase, mind control, whatever that he wants to get done. Uh, is he still going to get played? Yes, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's still useful. I think maybe people have to, maybe people will have to like rework how they play him. Um, maybe like, you know, incorporate like the close combat range combat expert stuff a little bit more. Maybe you have to start playing him on like a slightly more open map. Because if you can't phase and target through walls with uh, mind control every turn, then you're probably going to have to, like, you know, actually be able to take a shot with, like, his 13 for 4 or whatever with range combat expert, 14 for 4, whatever it'll be, which is still really solid. Like, you're yep. going to hit stuff with that. Uh, next up is the Legacy Apocalypse. This is the 2x2 two two from X of Swords main set. Uh, the effect reviewed was the hour of your glory is at hand, my horsemen. The bystanders on this card are horsemen bystanders and have max one. At the beginning of the game, you may generate a horseman bystander. When Apocalypse crosses a starting line after resolutions, you may generate a horseman bystander. Uh, so the errata to that is the bystanders on this card are the horsemen bystanders and have max one and a point value of five. So that's the big thing. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you may generate a horseman bystander, and when he crosses a starting line after your resolutions, you may generate a horseman bystander. Um, that's not the only way he can generate them. That's just the only way from the trait that they looked at. Uh, he also has the leadership ability that generates them as well. Um, and by starting line, they mean like his dial. So like when his when you cross from one of like the higher starting lines to a lower starting line, he can generate horsemen bystanders, which most people yeah. weren't playing him at any higher uh, starting line. They were playing at the 100 point line. Um, but giving him a point value of five, I'll read their explanation. An analysis of the results of this year's world championships showed a record number losses of 0 0, which can be attributed to Apocalypse which is sad uh, with this rain with his ranged mastermind and the speed at which he can generate bystanders. Very few teams can produce enough attacks to KO an apocalypse. And that problem is multiplied when he is used in multiples. So we did see a few triple apocalypse teams, which means there was at least three horsemen bystanders, which meant there was at least three things that they could mastermind to within range um, at any given time, several possible fixes were considered from making him unique to restricting his mastermind to ultimately giving his bystanders point value. We hope this will incentivize Apocalypse towards more aggressive strategies and dynamic games while keeping his unique toolkit intact. I like this because nobody's going to play triple Apocalypse if they can lose 15 points with like one energy explosion. Nobody's going to play triple Apocalypse if like I can triple target uh, Psychic Blast and they, like, mastermind, and all of a sudden I have 15 points. If I'm up on points, and they're sending bystanders at me, and they're not moving their apocalypses towards me, it's going to be really hard to justify playing in multiple apocalypses. Not to mention, you might not want all of your apocalypses spitting out, like, five-point value bystanders that are easy to KO, because if I just keep gobbling those up, and you can't take out, like, my heavier hitters, I think a triple apocalypse versus Thanos, like, you know, if this... Uh, errata was in place at Worlds, I don't think Triple Apocalypse would have ever beat a Thanos team uh, because it just would not have been able to get like the same amount of points that it needed. I mean, but, that's, yeah, That's pretty fair. I will say five isn't a lot. It gives you a good it's chance. Not. With how much he does pump these guys out, it is nice. But five, I wouldn't say, is a total... I don't think break, it's a lot, but it, it does come down to... If it's like the third time I'm attacking him and yeah. let's say they've only taken out like a, a retaliator or maybe like a molecule man on my team and my opponent has to start thinking like I've got to like let Apocalypse take this hit or I've got to let him take one of like the next couple hits because otherwise my opponent's going to be up on points or I have to like score something. They do have to get like a more aggressive strategy. Um, the only thing that like you know, his, his mastermind isn't restricted to just the horseman bystanders, so he can mastermind to other people as well. So I think that'll be, like, the, the tactic that most people use is, like, you know, we saw, like, the Genesis or, no, not Genesis, Annihilation. Uh, the Annihilation that is, like, 75 points and makes those bystanders every turn. So those 
can also be masterminded yeah. too, and those will still be zero points. So I think you'll see more of that, but a single yeah. apocalypse is a lot easier to deal with than a triple apocalypse. And I don't think you see many triple or double apocalypses because there's just not enough damage output. It was more about point denial, and now they don't oh, have yeah. the option for point denial. Um, but yeah, he's... It would actually be interesting to like go over any of those... I know we have a Jason Alvey game where he runs triple apocalypse and just to check out like if we were like as if back then those were five points each and go look at the outcomes of those games, you know, where he like won, then it's like, well, how many points did he win by? I mean, right. like, yeah, it would be interesting to see. And if, like, yeah, versus if he, how many he went, if he went like died. zero, zero, well, we know he went zero, zero in like the top 16 or top eight. I think, um, yeah. Yeah, one of them ended in like a roll off because I remember him saying he rolled like a six or a yeah, seven he and did, his opponent but, yeah. rolled like one less. Um, so yeah, if his opponent, like it wouldn't have ended in a roll off if his opponent got five points. Um, obviously he would, both of their strategies would have changed as well. But um, yeah, this is a big change. I think this is, uh, I don't know, on the scale of like the Thanos change to this one, I feel like this one is a bigger change because it it really forces like the apocalypse player to actually be actively engaging. You can't just like sit back and spit out bystanders and have them do the work for you because if your opponent's just scoring those, I mean that's like trying to play uh that team I talked about last week that was like that casual team with like Red Skull and Nick Fury and stuff where you're generating, you know, um generic figures and then like just like send those out. That's fine for casual, but in a competitive setting, you're giving your opponent 15 points every time one of those dies, and they're very easy to KO. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I think that's a good change. I like it more than them just slapping a unique ring. I, frankly, I hate whenever that's like the fix is just like slap a unique ring on it. I like when they make an effect unique or when they do something like this that just makes it not worth playing him in multiples. Um, slapping a unique ring on Apocalypse, in my opinion, would have been a worse change and i feel like anyone that tries to play triple apocalypse with like that five point value is gonna have a lot of like teams that just go and you know pop one or two bystanders and then pull back to their starting area and if the apocalypses don't want to come there or if they send their bystanders there they're just gonna yeah. lose more points you know maybe they send one apocalypse and then that team just like dog piles them but yeah like uh taking like saul's team for example um, there is no reason, like he wouldn't have any reason to be as aggressive against like a triple apocalypse team when he could just shoot a bystander, bop back to like his starting area, and then it's like, well, if an apocalypse comes, I can easily drop a hex mar marker and take care of it in one turn, or I can just you know pop some more bystanders from it, and uh, yeah, right on. Again, I think it's a good change. It's where it's just not a total point denial piece. Point denial is not fun to play against. You're like running against the clock, impossible to kill these things, and it's just like, geez, I want to score some points. Oh, you know? so yeah, I feel like do I feel like this point. honestly, like I don't, I don't want them to rework stop clicks, but it almost feels like stop clicks should get you like a percentage of the cost. Like if you hit someone to stop. You should get some points. That's like when you would KO Unimind, but you didn't actually get any points because he turns into like the blue flames and then time would be called. Yeah, see, that feels you put in all that work and then they take 10 minutes to place yeah. the blue flames. And then it's like, come on, man. No, I don't miss those days at all where it's like, OK, I bodied Unimind. Cool, cool, cool. But then you're like back of your head. You're like, OK, but how long did that take? How much time do I have left? Like, like I got to play. I genuinely be interested period. in how many people lost games because the blue flames weren't placed in time for them to make attacks against them. Yeah. Cause I, I honestly think that, that happened way more often than it should have. Definitely. Should have been, should like, have been. You got a hundred points for Unimind or like you got his cost and then you got like five points for each blue flame or something. Uh, that was also very prior cool. to the, at the very uh, least just say place, you know, like, special marker in the square Unimind died, place the blue flames adjacent to that marker. You know, literally something right. like that would have been so nice where it's not like, um, let me see. I'm going to put, uh, let's put Thena here. And it's like, dude, come on. You know, like that was pain. Absolutely pain. Oh, wait, no, no. Cersei's got to be in the hindering because yeah. she has stealth. Oh, miserable. 
But uh, but yeah, so Apocalypse I think is is fine, and that's kind of what is echoed throughout all these like Silver Age bits here that I'll just read through quick because again, much um so for Silver Age they're like, are we gonna ban Mad Jim? They're like, nah. Hawkeye, they're like, we gonna get rid of him? They're like, nah, nah. So that's this is AW Hawkeye, the uh, running shot, keep making an attack Hawkeye. They're like, he's fine in Silver Age. Thanos, it, Thanos is banned in Silver Age. That is one really interesting thing I will say. And to even be fair, after Thanos the is Arata, which even after the Arata, but he was also like the best call in. That's true. Someone to call in like ID cards is what I mean. People, if you don't. You know, with Silver Age too much or no ID cards or you started playing recently. Cost five points. Power action. You can bring in somebody. Thanos is a high enough point cost where you can bring in a ton of different ID cards with all of them being legal now. He's just a great ID card yeah, call in. The, I would the say movement with phasing and then the move the being really hard yeah. to down. Good you know, ID call ins were basically yeah. like when ID cards were uh, alive and well a good ID call-in was somebody that was hard to kill, enough points to call in all the good stuff, and um, like had sidestep or like some sort of mobility yeah. that allowed them to what we used to call poof the ID card <clears throat> once it was like had done its thing. So once you moved, you could call them in, move like running shot, charge, whatever. Um, but if they moved outside five squares, I think yeah, five squares, five yeah, five or six, then they would uh, like disappear. Five. And so you would like charge them four and then sidestep back to, and then your opponent can't score them. So that's the reason why a lot of people hated ID cards. Cause you were getting attacked by things that you couldn't I- attack back. Like, especially in like an age of heavy retaliation, you'd get attacked by something. Then there'd be nothing to retaliate against. You couldn't retail. Yeah. That is isn't the wild thing. Just you saying it was the ID card explanation. I was like, yeah, poof. You said it, we call it poof. And I'm like, why the heck do we call it poof? Get it? They disappeared, so it's like poof, they're gone. But it's like, man, all collectively, basically, these heroes players are like, all right, and then he poofs, and it's like we just we all said it to grown adults being like, and this character poofs, and it's like, wow, we uh, just weird to me it looking back wild. now. But I mean, they poof. That's that's what yeah, they'd be doing that though. Was like the yeah, yeah, the pinch. That was the term we used. The pinch. Yeah, that was the non official game uh, term. I'm sorry, poof official isn't game term. an uh, official game term, yeah. so. You'll have to explain uh, to me what you just did. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Time got called, so he's still on the board. Yeah, so that's basically ID card Collins' biggest ones. Used to be like Lex Luthor. Could not be targeted at all unless you started your turn adjacent. So him being a 200 point can't be targeted. This is easier than that. Obviously, he can be targeted, but he just has all this mobility and stuff. So I'm okay with Thanos being banned in silver. If you look at our silver tournament video we did for Worlds, a lot of the sentiments were the same. Thanos did technically win silver. It was a handshake at the end for Dan to win with Thanos and silver. So that's still a win no matter what. And he was at least in the top two no matter what. So Thanos had a really strong showing. We saw a ton of Thanos in the silver field. Also, most people just kind of complained about how annoying and broken, not broken, but annoying and just not fun Thanos is to play against in silver with ID cards and everything. So I am happy to see him go. Hopefully silver gets a bit healthier and we see a bit more unique parts to silver than just a modern age team. That was another big thing was just like, I'm playing my modern age team with ID yeah. cards. If another you can, big thing we saw. If you can ban a, sil- a single figure to improve... Um, the amount of like builds that are viable as a whole, then yeah. I think that's like a it's a net good for like the community. I'd say Thanos and... is like the right start. I don't know yeah. if he'd be the perfect one technically, but I think that's the right call right now. Yeah, I agree. I think I think Thanos was uh, an ugly spot in silver that was like hard to hard to like overcome without an equal like Thanos Eight. kind of thing. And so now, yeah, maybe we'll get some more unique builds. Maybe not. I mean, who knows? We'll see, I mean, time time will indeed tell. And the last thing for Silver was, are they going to ban Apocalypse? They said no. So because they said the changes they made were solid. So he he will, and I quote, feel he won't become an oppressive force in Silver Age meta, which I think is very interesting. But they did consider banning him. They're like, nah, but he's fine. So... That is that is it for silver. So Thanos is the only thing banned. It's well, not the only thing banned. There's a big silver ban list. Thanos got added to the silver ban list. Mad Jim, Hawkeye, 
apocalypse are totally fine overall this watch list was not a boom you got crippled unplayable like how some watch lists have been to some figures i think this just made a lot of figures not terrible to play against and made them still work the same way but be a little bit more balanced in my opinion like i've seen some people complain about this watch list but i think the consensus overall is that this is a very fair and just well-made watch list and i couldn't agree more i i really like this watch list yeah yeah the changes they made the erratas they made were i don't personally have any any gripe against like any of these figures i i was still of like the mind that like thanos would get weeded out eventually on his own just because everything eventually does uh people just like figure out like what to play but i'm also fine with them being proactive to like kind of like encourage people to play different stuff you know uh and like i said like anything that decreases the like the field of playability is probably bad for the game as a whole um it's not a concern of mine because i don't tend to like play in those fields but if i did i'd be okay with all of these right on let's go ahead and jump into some questions shall we there are dozens of us dozens some listener questions over on our patreon Discord, and if you want to join the Discord, you got to be that's right, a member of the Patreon. Five dollars and up gets you access to the Discord, and also a ton of blooper little clips from podcast episodes. You get a ton of behind the scenes videos, and you get an early look at upcoming sketch videos, unboxings, etc. That will be posted on YouTube. Also, do we're going to start trying to do some snap tournaments. Hopefully, every Sunday we'll do some snap tournaments for real world prizes. We also like to do some Bad Samaritan tournaments, which is basically a hero clicks guessing game. If you haven't listened to an episode of Bad Snap Sam on it, are actually a lot easier than it sounds like they would be. They actually are really easy. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter like, like what it kind of like scales up to whatever le- level you were at. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, like you know, if you're if you're really good and you're like at like the you know hundred collector amount or whatever. It's not going to be any easier for you to win than the guy that's at like 30 or whatever. Uh, but yeah. I know, right on. So, I've, the Snap tournaments are actually kind of cool. You versus uh, other people. It's not other people directly in the Discord, but it's you at your level seeing how far you can get. And it's just like, oh, cool. You know, it's a fun little hour long race for cubes, which I think is just great. So. Anyways, that's the Discord. That's the Patreon plug. We're doing really cool stuff for the Patreon. We have all of our Avengers Forever tokens finally made, and our X Men uh, Ten of Swords tokens are all finally made. Those will be getting in later this month. So current members are going to get the full token drop. If you want to look at the die, it's Dial H four. That's the number for Hero Clicks for Patreon. Check that out. Free to join it. You know, if you want to support the show, if you just want to toss a buck our way, you don't want any rewards. That's also totally fine. Oh, thank you for supporting us. Patreon lets us do so much cool stuff. Lets us make so many cool videos. It's us, you know, turn Simeon into Batrock the Leaper. You know, <laughs> like, that's a big, big help. You know, so, like, the Patreon funds instantly, directly put all of that back into the podcast. Making cool tokens, making cool videos. Make sure we give you guys some of the best HeroClix content that could ever possibly be made. Questions. Hans McCall here, the Punchy Ranch Man, has a lot of questions here. Top three casual play pieces for Avengers Forever. He said AF4E. No, it's just AF. Avengers AF, dude. That's IMO, in my opinion. I think Avengers Forever should just be AF. Yeah. The AF4E Avengers or AV4E. Like, yeah, just AF. So top three casual pieces. Do a little back and forth so that way we can really think about which ones i don't know if i could do three necessarily off the top of my head but i could definitely do one and then while simeon's pick i could definitely choose another one i would have to say kind of everything with a team up card but specifically mm-hmm. i'll go patriot i think the yeah. patriot young avengers team up card is a number one casual piece that's gonna be a ton of fun to play yeah, in my yeah, opinion absolutely. i think it's really awesome uh simeon i agree yeah a hundred percent with that one um I'll go with uh, the Uncommon Doctor Strange at, okay, yeah. at either point line, but most likely a 75-point line uh, to be like the big heavy hitter of your team or one of them. Uh, not only can he make Astral Doctor Stranges, but he can also make a Wong 
and then bonus points if you have the long team up so that they can both use willpower or um, not ma- willpower they can both use mastermind um to I, wait long has a team up yeah does yeah Dr. yeah Strange. mastermind but only to choose characters with the mystical keyword um so yeah they can both use it and because uh Doctor Strange brings in an actual character and not a bystander. The Astral Doctor Strange does have the mystical keyword, so they can both mastermind to those. Uh, I think it's just a really fun piece. Is it going to win you a bunch of stuff? Probably not at the 75-point line. Uh, Probably not at the 40-point line. But um, he is very mobile, and then he also just has, like, a long dial for 75 points with like the mastermind ESD super senses. It's going to take your opponent a while to chew through everything. I think next pick, I don't get anybody too mad for me choosing prime here, but I think swordsman mostly because he goes with Koya. I think that's just the perfect fun, casual team to build. Now that you finally have the uh, general to uh, Koya's like being army here, which is really cool. So only completing this fun little casual team. Koya's army. Yeah, dude. Welcome to Ko- oh gosh, welcome to Koya's army. No, no, oh, ah, uh, don't. Yeah, PT- Doug, who the HC realm to Koya's army. Oh, Duckes, Duckes, so it's Duckes army now. Duke's Duke's army, yeah, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. So I think just Swordsman Duke completing King that League. fun casual team is is just a nice little. Uh, I think it's a good casual piece specifically for him. I oh yeah, I actually really love playing that. Uh, Koya and casual like settings like um, you're doing like a 500 400 point game that 200 point Koya is not such a point sink that like you're stuck just playing him and like a little bit of extra stuff he can do his own thing and then his bystanders have time to get boosted up and yeah if you play that swordsman it's going to be doubly so um, ah. so yeah I, I agree as well um, my next pick and this is probably airs on like the more fun petitive kind of side but i'm gonna say kazar uh i yeah. he's he's unique but i i think if you don't build like real hard with him so let's say you build uh not with the first three keywords so no animal mystical or ruler <laughs> you build like savage land wakanda or warrior i think yeah, yeah. Be a really fun piece to play around with um, obviously like the bystander generation is like one of my favorite things, making the Zabu, making him more mobile, being able to make him again if need be. But then the amount of warriors, like Eddie Guerrero crossing the map. Oh yes. Doing like a, a three. I mean, obviously like there's no way to really get Eddie in place to do a three amigos top dial except for, you know, Kazar. This, this so, move, yeah, yeah. Like you can you can move Eddie four squares potentially. You know, more if you have like some perplex and stuff. But yeah, get him in place for that before he does his like signature would be awesome. Um, there's other obviously there's like there's plenty of warriors that would benefit from this quite a bit. But um, I just think that yeah, the combination of like Eddie, uh, maybe maybe something from like the. Uh, the uh, X of Swords set, the main set, like uh, the Prime Iska, would be fun. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of like random stuff that you can build around with Kazar without going like super heavy into like competitive stuff. And I think that's it's definitely fun enough to play around with, especially if you're playing like a higher point game and he's just a fifty point like whatever piece. And then all of a sudden, one of your big heavy hitters is moving halfway across the map turn one yeah. and my last one again people might be so this being <laughs> the super rare prime i do like this century i don't think Ooh, he's like yeah competitive personally just because running shot pen blast for seven will kill him uh to that again but <laughs> for seven he, so yeah for seven it can know, be just, done i guess if you yeah. get running shot pen blaster for seven uh he'll just die yeah but no, just for dies. like a hundred in a way though for like a hundred points no stop clicks no whatever this really if i'm not seeing it casually in my opinion if you just want to try to do the hurl into orbit and prob your attacks as much as possible i just think the hurl into orbit trade is so funny 
it's freaking hilarious. So, you know, I'm going to try to get my, I don't, I barely read maybe two of a century, you know, but the whole Herlander orbit thing is just too funny for me to not want to just play this dude a ton and just place people on the other side of the map because it's, it's just so, it's literally so hilarious. So, I got to give him as my as my last casual pick. But again, guys, I said every team up card is like a perfect, awesome, fun, casual thing. So, you know, if you're like, wow, Colby's yeah. got spendy picks for casual. <laughs> it's, it's because of, you know, that little thing kind of helps out. But I literally love this century so much. I just want to yeah. keep punching people into orbit. It's my hilarious. biggest want from this set is both centuries. Yeah. Um, fun. I'm going to do a quick shout out. Uh, Blue Marvel. Because, like, so uh, assuming that we're playing with, like, the new rules that come out here in, uh, like, February when DC's next set drops, uh, Blue Marvel equipped with the U.S. Agent Shield, so he's got uh, combat reflexes, Ooh. means that, like, he's hard to hit from close, but if you shoot him, then he just constantly heals. Uh, that's, you know, obviously your opponent, if they're playing well, they'll be able to get around it, but uh, it's a very good casual thing. Uh, and then Stature and Miss Marvel are both rares that yeah, start yeah. as standard size. So that means that you can equip them with anything on like your your force build sheet. They can start equipped, but then they can change to tiny, giant, whatever, and retain the ability to use whatever object they or whatever equipment they are equipped with. I don't know what exactly you equip them with. Maybe like a sword. Maybe. Um, like a Disney Plus object, maybe like something from Silver or older. But yeah, I think it's more than fun to uh, give somebody like, you know, like give Stature the uh, Mighty Thor Mjolnir and then have her kit a uh, giant damage symbol with close combat expert. And so then she's a 12 for 4 when attacking people from close. I don't know. Seems fun. But, uh, yeah, the last one I'm going to pick is going to be that uh, Thanos. So Thanos comes in only at 250 points. I think he's a super hard piece to take down in a casual setting. If you play like a 200, or not 200, if you play like a 500-point battle uh, with him, he's only half your build. If you play like 400, then you might have enough support stuff around him. But it also will probably go fast enough where he can potentially get the mission point win but even if he doesn't he's just really hard to take out on his own he's got really solid stats uh he has a bystander that comes out um i guess technically uh but no i think he's fun enough to uh to try and like boss battle in like a way um and for anyone wondering uh the taraxia bystander is almost exactly the same as the old taraxia Ooh. le so a lot of people have those sitting around. Nobody wants them. Uh, but she is a decent sculpt. She's got a base that makes sense. Uh, her top dial is almost the exact same stats. It's just instead of her special damage being a character whose name includes Thanos, you can use Perplex. So it's a it's normally... if it, if you control a character whose name includes Thanos, Taraxia, you can use Perplex. Uh, the bystander just has per- Perplex pl- printed on it. And then her speed is an 8 instead of a 7. Other than that, she has the exact same top dial stats as that old LE. So you can use that 100-point thing to mimic your 0-point bystander. And let me tell you, they're basically worth the same at that point. <laughs> Actually, no, the the bystander is still infinitely better. Rip Taraxia, the LE figure everybody got 18 of because yeah. they could not give those things away. Once the like, judges uh, are just like tossed at you out of like open uh, windows. The dumpster full Taraxia is out there somewhere, and there's not a single tear was shed for that whatsoever. Yeah, it, was, it was mine at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Right, then Chance asks, if you had to have a starting five for a basketball team of other Heroclix content creators, who would you pick? Oh, jeez. Oh, starting Ow. five uh, basketball team. Okay. And yeah, no, I got this. I got this. I would definitely say, if we're going off basketball, what's important in basketball? It's going to be 
creates a you know blocking yeah. slash like guarding defending uh, i guess some cardio um, cardio involved i think it's got to go ej bolin for sure he's <laughs> The Muggsy Bows of Hero Clicks players. Uh, yeah. Scott Crampton, also very tall, totally can guard super Just well. Absolutely blind the opponents with the yeah. Up, up, yep, with the um the chrome dome, if you would. Very shiny, very shiny. And I would say we're gonna count David Newmark as he does create <laughs> uh Content as in the wake of tournaments uh, just, for the yeah, uh, tournaments. champion clicks. I mean, it's not really. He did a, a boxing one time with video. That's true. That's true. Um, then I think you know he's got really good lungs, really good cardio. I don't want to say his full name, but it's BB and Hero Clicks. Um, who he is? Great, you know. Uh, ooze rods and Hero Clicks uh, rhymes with that. Yeah, I think yeah. He's got great cardio. I think his lungs are in top condition. I've heard the main cough. Then, he can definitely, yeah. definitely oh, yeah. cough, I guess. <laughs> he can definitely cough. And then, man, who do I want my last since that is that is really that is actually really, really, really tough. Uh, Michael Jordan. All right. Simeon. For it. <laughs> All right. I, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to do actual picks. I'll actually go Edward Shelton's my last pick. Sorry. Edward Shelton's oh, my last yeah, pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Actually, yeah, probably. Good that's pick. actually probably a good pick. He'll um, he's actually carrying the team. I mean, <laughs> carrying the team for sure. Uh, I'm gonna go with a certain Ian Eggleston. Oh yeah, that's a good the, call. One of like the tallest, actual tallest people that I know in Hero Clicks. Yeah, that's gonna be like one of my top ones. I will say yeah, from the Eagle Cast, uh, I will go with uh, nickname of Jelly Bean. Uh, I've heard he's tall. I have never actually seen him in person, but also like Chip and Brian are both. I'd say Chip's pretty six tall. Foot. Like I don't know yeah, how tall they are, but like yeah, I had to look Brian up to them. Both sadly, over six foot. sadly had to look up to them <laughs> the whole weekend. I met them. Um, so what is that? That that puts me at four. Uh, I'll go with Jason Alvey as my tall. fifth because I feel like I don't know. I feel like he's got like the inspirational speech, like half halftime inspirational speech. Plus, he's like the right size that like he's he's good at guarding. He's good at like blocking. He's the right height, and uh, yeah, I think that would work. I don't know. I can't think of a lot of content creators right now, to be honest. No, like my brain got zapped. I just reminded of Jay Solomon here. Do you think he balls? Does Jay Solomon ball? I don't know. Does Jay Me. saw ball? See, just Jay saw ball. Does Jay saw ball? Hmm. Saw ball. We may he had Adam Smasher powers. Know. Then I'd be like, yes, absolutely. He balls because then he could be because I want him to be. <laughs> uh, oh, he looks almost exactly like the that plays that played Adam Smasher. Now that I think about it. Oh man, uh, we'll we'll get into that yeah, later. We'll get, we'll get, to, get to Adam Smashing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, next up, overachieving legacy card in this set versus the most underachieving legacy card uh, for, I'm going to say, Avengers Forever. So what's the best Avengers Forever team up or legacy card? And then what's the worst legacy card in Avengers Forever? Is everybody saying? Yeah, overachieving, underachieving. So, oh. dang, I would say got to be MODOK. Me, the oh. best. Because you cut his point value in half. Yeah. So, and he's still an eight-click long blast running shot he's got all the bystanders the mission point thing he's got pulse wave that ignores friendly characters i think modok is the clear like just the best legacy card i would say as far as underachieving goes maybe dark star it's a tough 50 point aisle she definitely has uses uh once molecule man rotates she'll definitely replace him i guess but she's she's 20 more points than he is but it might be Dark Star because at the very least, I like what they did creatively with everybody else. Like I like that we got Hawkeye back. I didn't want Dark Star back, you know. I no. liked the nine lives thing for Tigra was really fun. Jarvis was fun. Agent Coulson was fun. I think Dark Star would be the, my most underwhelming one. Um, I'm actually gonna go with oh, man. I can't go with. I want to go with Bullseye Hawkeye, the the Sky Cycle Hawkeye. But he's got Dave 10 range for... triple bolts with range combat expert top dial. So 
Uh, that would be for my overachieving, like the one that, like okay. the one that's like or underachieving, the one that didn't get changed. Underachieving, enough. Um, okay, sure. But for fifty points, he's like stupid good. So I, ah uh, man, I think for underachieving, I, I have to go with Black Panther. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. If he's been attacked this turn, he has safeguard outwit, can't be targeted by ranged attacks, which is like a weird version of the WWE team ability. And then he's got stealth and free. If he occupies hindering train, place him within a square, uh, within four squares and of line fire of line, four squares and line of fire. Um, the problem with that is that's like worse than just giving him traded charge. They are just giving him traded stealth charge and then free. If he was like in, stealth or if he was in hindering give him flurry as well he might have been worth it but he's 60 points yeah. an 11 for two top dial and i just don't see what i'm using him for honestly like, I really that don't. 60 points being a two damage the entire time is really rough i mean it the is. blades clicks that's nice but like man two damage for a 60 point figure the entire time that is really tough yeah and uh so i'm gonna say black panther's my underachieving um the one that I think they they boosted that didn't like have any. I'm I, I'm actually gonna um, let's see. I thought one of them had like poison stuff. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go with Modok. Modok had no yeah. business being that good. So good, dude. He's he's like my number one. As soon as they like previewed him and showed that he was a mission point dude, and then also he made bystanders that we didn't have in the game prior. Yeah. Like he makes new bystanders. I was like, man, they're they're not just legacy carding the figure and doing a whole bunch of new trait stuff. They're also making bystanders that he generates, like two. Yeah. He has two to choose from. And uh so yeah, Modoc had he had no business being that good, I guess. A zero. I mean, two of our favorite mechanics, bystanders, mission points. Are you kidding me? Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's so cool. Ants goes on to ask, in honor of Native American Heritage Month, what's your favorite character in comics? It's Native. I like Earth X, I love White Wingfoot as Red Wing and Earth X. He's really, really, really cool. For normal 616, it's probably got to be Warpath. Warpath is just a bees baller. Warpath is so cool. So it's like Warpath and White Wingfoot. So many good ones, but those have probably got to be my top for sure. Yeah. That seems fair. Um, man, uh, I have to say, just from like Hero Clicks perspective, it's Red Wolf. Um, oh yeah, oh, I can't believe I spaced around Red Wolf. That's good. Yeah, That's a good pick. I I don't even know. I mean, if I was gonna go like the person that I've actually read comics of, then it would be it'd be Sarah Rainmaker from Gen Thirteen because like she's For got sure. similar to like shaman she's got like you know uh shaman po- powers sonically controlled water powers uh but no red wolf and lobo just seems like such a cool story such a good storyline that yeah. yeah that's what i have to go with his stuff with uh jack monroe is nomad is also really cool too i like that team up red wolf and nomad is a really good like two issue i think book they had but yeah i know red wolf is a good is a freaking good pick Ants asks, who's your favorite character that's an animal or is on an animal? Hashtag let's ride. What a what a guy. Favorite animal is Howard the Duck. That's my favorite character that's an animal. Howard the Duck is awesome. Howard the Duck is actually just one of my all-time favorite characters, Peter. Oh, easily Howard. I cannot get enough Howard the Duck. I own a ton of Howard the Duck comics. Howard's an awesome character. He's hilarious. He gets into all kinds of hype. High- if I was alive when Howard the Duck ran for president, I would have voted for him. Yeah, no, I love Howard the Duck. Nice. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to say, actually, yeah, I'll go with, um, I'll go with the, the Red Lantern cat. Uh, what's his name? Oh, Dexter. Dexter. Yeah. Dexter doesn't have like a ton of background, but the little background like story that he did get is pretty awesome. I think it's like worth reading that like one shot ish comic. Uh, actually, makes you care about like a Red Lantern for once instead of just being like, yeah, that's like, oh, you uh, like were bad at 
business school and then got real mad at like some lady on the internet and now you got a red lantern ring that's great uh no dexter has like an actual reason for having rage and so it's it's actually like a a good comic and i really like dexter because of his specific like comic thing it actually really reminds me of like this online web comic that i won't get into but um there's like this web creator that does like this like death taking animals series where it's like hmm. death comes up like that's where not where that like was i a good whatever oh yeah, comes I from. Mean, yeah it's not that one but it's like very similar to that kind of feel where it's like yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna get into it it's good then bill asks as the current dial age bad sam and marvel snap champ goodness gracious ask what are your favorite ooh black panther and black adam piece for aid Ooh. My favorite Black Adam is the Trinity War Black Adam. That's Hoodie. Yeah, that's Hoodie Black Adam. Yeah. I like him a lot. Black Panther. There's a bit more Black Panther. I might have to look this one up really quick. Look at my um, options. Mine is definitely the Age of Ultron one. Um, oh, yeah. He is really good. Yeah. Like, sculpt wise, like one of the coolest that we've ever seen. Um, play wise, I've definitely played the chair Black Panther from Avengers Defenders War the most. But no, the one from Age of Ultron's the coolest like Black Panther sculpt ever. And then he had a very cool cloaking tech trait that was uh, stealth toughness. If it isn't your turn, lines of fire to him are blocked if he's adjacent to blocking terrain. So it wasn't like, oh, like he's barriered in and I can see through blocking. No, it was like they are blocked by a trait. So like nothing can yeah. see him if he's adjacent to blocking. You would have to destroy the blocking to see him. And even then, he's, like, through hindering, potentially, at that point. Uh, but, no, there's, like, certain maps where he just never can be targeted or, like, never have a line of fire drawn to him. Uh, and so I always liked him. He's a little expensive, point cost-wise. Uh, also really hard to track down, so hopefully they never legacy card him because he'll be real spendy. But, yeah, that's one of my favorite Black Panthers was like one of the most iconic figures of Age of Ultron though. So he would be oh, deserving yeah. of a legacy card, but yeah, tough to track down for sure. Man, he was. He was iconic. He was like, yo, you pull Black Panther, dude. How you won that sealed, say no more. You can pull Black Panther, like it's over. Uh my favorite, it's kind of between these two. I do love Gauntlet Panther a lot. I only ever played him once oh, yeah, in a yeah. battle royal, but Gauntlet Panther was so fun in that BR. But my favorite prior to that one, and one I did play a handful of times, is the Avengers vs. X-Men LE Black Panther. This is really cool. He ignored hindering terrain and characters for movements. I always just love improved movement, ignore his characters. The main reason I played him was he gave one other friendly character than four squares uh, willpower. Back then, not everybody had indom, so that was actually kind of like important. And you could choose. That was the cool thing, so you could choose each turn. So like empower leadership outwit just straight up on a damage power which is really fun. so that Avengers versus X Men Black Panther. All right, let's see. Next up, we'll ask how many Hydra agents, Shield operatives, Astral Doctor Stranges, and Mindless ones should I buy? Oh, dang, this is a it's a tough one. It all comes down to uh, how much. Like, do you want to just run a team full of them, or it's like I'm just running Red Skull? Right. That's the max amount of Hydra agents I. Should I think if you're just running Red Skull with his ability to bring in so many, I think eight is a good start for all. I think five is a good start for every one of those. Get five of each. Um, my rule for generics that I used to have was I'm going to get 100 points of this generic. So that way, if it's on the sideline or if it's enforcing a bunch of stuff, like a general in his army, I have 100 points to generic. So these ones being so cheap, that's, that's kind of a lot of them. Uh, 15, 30, 30, 30. Yeah, no, it's like five, six, roughly about seven. Yeah, I'd say get 100 points of each generic for them being like 15 to 20, 25 points. So I think we you think, Simeon, how much of uh, uh, many generics he's specifically asking for? Should he get I'll just say, whatever? personally, for like myself, Hydra agents are going to take like the highest value. So it's going to be like 20 Hydra agents. I don't think I'll use as many shield operatives. So that's going to be like around 10. Astral Doctor Stranges, I don't think I'll ever get more than, like, five. I don't think that's necessary. And then Mindless Ones will be, man, probably in, like, the the 20-ish range as well. Because 20? 
Dormammu Funny. and Dormammu. If I get Dormammu and Dormammu red, then yes. Um, okay, yeah. But like mindless That's ones about, like, are like mindless ones. If yeah, you Dormammu specifically red, not to be generated. Number. Specifically to start on the main force. Um that's like so like it'd be like 10 to start on main force and then 10 because i've got two people that can call them in kind of thing uh whereas astral doctor strange is i'm probably not paying for an astral doctor strange and shield operative i'm probably not paying for them i'm probably paying like for nick fury and maria hill or some combo there but no i i think that's about like where i would be at uh i will say mindless ones for whatever reason, are going for like four dollars on cool stuff. So might have oh to God. either either Ow. like yeah get a bunch of packs now or um like buy them at four dollars and hope they don't go up in price. I don't know. Hope they they're not probably going to go down in price, but maybe. Probably just going to sell my mindless ones. How many mindless ones? Call are going to get zero. He's <laughs> selling them all, bro. Are you kidding me? Four bucks. Pulled three the other day. Paid for a booster. Nice. What a pay for. Anyways, yeah. Ranch man, punchy ranch man chance McCall asks, why are people that call carbonated drinks pop just incorrect? Not incorrect. People can call it pop or soda. Soda pop. I think tech, like the full, whatever. I call it pop. I think it's fine. I think I'm in. People know what you're talking about. It can't be incorrect, right? If you say, I'm going to go get a, you know, a pop. People like call any soda or pop just Coke. It is incorrect. Might not get a Coke. Like, oh, you want a Coke? What kind of Coke do you want? Like, what do you mean, what kind of Coke do I want? Diet Coke. Right. Like, oh, you want Sprite Coke? I'm like, no, there's no such thing as Sprite Coke. There's no Sprite Coke. No Pepsi Coke. Coke. There's Sprite or Pepsi. You know what I mean? Like, people that say everything is Coke, that is actually incorrect. But people that call it pop is fine. You yeah. tackle that at all, Simeon? Are you no, just like, sure, I... <laughs> sure, whatever? Pop, pop soda, whatever. It's all fine. Yeah. I've never had anyone just say, like, uh, use just like Coke as a catch-all for like carbonated beverage, but I will say like I, I don't discriminate when it comes to the, uh, the beverage handles. Okay. Well, Bill then on the flip side says, why are people who call carbonated drinks anything but pop incorrect? To which I'll just the same sentiment is echoed here. They're they're not for if they call it Coke because it's not all Coke. Yeah. And this will be a fun one, actually, for you, Simeon. Bill asks, after today's epic game between the Vikings and Bills, uh, Vikings won in overtime, is what is your favorite Captain Kirk in Hero Clicks as a reference to uh, Kirk Cousins, I believe? Uh, uh, I don't understand the, the title football reference, but... Um, it's probably the title character, Kirk, as that's the only one I've oh, ever played. Title Kirk is... Eh, he, he is okay. Yeah. They overcosted a lot of the title characters. I am now looking at them and I'm like, yikes, that's a hundred points. Yeah. It, they overcosted a lot of the title characters. And then like the Borg queen was the only one even close because she had the assimilation part of like the title character thing yeah. that none of the rest of them did. The rest of them just had to like bring in the worst Starfleet guy by turn four. <laughs> like that was like their, or uh, Romulan or um, I think there was a Klingon one too. Uh, but no, I'll go with the uh, the naked time Kirk, which is the the chase. I mean, from that. maybe arguably the best Kirk. Yeah, right? he's probably the best Kirk because yeah, he had the uh, potentially free close combat expert attack, which they carry yeah. him up and just drop him off and be like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna hit you Got twelve for like him. four or whatever it was. You can just replace. I like. I also do like that too. That at any time you can take your shirt off and just replace him from your sideline with a different Captain Kirk is a hilarious <laughs> treat. Trait, yeah. Like, all right, let's go. Gets ripped off. Maybe even that's free. And then you could do punch for free. And then you could normal punch. Yeah. Love it. Actually, is <laughs> hilarious. Right. That is all of our questions and basically the bulk of our normal episode, guys. So, like we said, these questions were all given to us by Patreon members through our Discord. We have a ton of fun on Discord. Every night, we do tournaments, we have real prizes. Joining the Patreon gets you access to giveaways and tokens and stickers and all sorts of cool stuff. Now, until the end of the year, we're going to be retiring the Chainsaw Chip shirt design. So, if you join the Patreon next two months here, before like this January 1st, you get a Chainsaw Chip shirt. After that, it is retired actually as a special gift to a lot of Patreon members that have been with us so long, I'm going to be giving away a Chainsaw Chip shirt. Everybody that supported our Patreon 
over two years. So, you know, obviously, if you're going to join now, you're not going to get into it. But join as soon as you can, because this might be a reoccurring thing every year near December as a little special gift. Maybe it will, maybe it won't be. Just saying, throwing it out there. But this year, Dial H has had such you know massive success that I wanted to reward all the people that helped us get here. So, yeah, that's my last Patreon plug, I promise. Nice. And with that, uh, stay tuned if you want to hear our review of Black Adam. But we are brought to you, like always, by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. To Condock, where we go and see what's happening in this quaint little country. <laughs> it's overrun by Australian intergang, I guess. Intergang. Yeah. It was like, oh, cool. We are going to have intergang. We're going to like have some deep stuff. It, that was neat. No. So, Black Adam in The Rock Johnson. Intergang, which hasn't been a keyword since the Superman set, <laughs> are the yeah they're, they're the main villains of this whole this whole thing it's an interesting movie i liked i liked black adam i enjoyed it i don't know if i'd like rewatch it again super soon but i don't think i'd change the channel necessarily if it was on no. but let's go ahead and jump into it so the rock's performance number one as Ooh. Black adam black adam. um what do you think rock was a little flat i'm not gonna lie like yeah i know he's going for like i don't know like at no point was ugh, man I have to say, like, I hate campy rock when, like, he used his catchphrases from the WWE and stuff. But at the same time, I really kind of wanted Black Adam to be, like, called out. Like, she says Shazam. He, like, appears in, like, a smoke cloud or whatever. I really wanted him to be, like, finally, after 5,000 years... Teth Adam has returned to Kanda. Oh oh <laughs> I really wanted God. that, like... Th- back for whatever garbage reason in my brain i just super wanted that cheesy moment that like useless garbage like turn off the movie kind of moment um uh no like so things that i really liked about like the rock um he kind of did like a schwarzenegger in a terminator kind of thing where he was like i don't understand this child is teaching me all the slang and all the crazy kind of, Yeah, I guess that was their relationship, uh, wasn't it? Yeah. Could have done without the kid, to be honest. I didn't, didn't like feel, the kid either. Not yeah, a fan. I didn't feel like... I know there was like supposed to be a like parental tie that kind of like brought him back because like his son... Uh, yeah, obviously, that's like comic accurate is like Teth Adam's son dying is pretty integral to like who he is. Black Adam's like character is kind of tied to that whole like backstory that'd be like Bruce yeah. Wayne um not losing his parents or something but that being said I don't think the kid was necessary or at least like not in that big of a role uh wasn't like super big into like the I don't know skateboarder whatever yeah. <clears throat> he's like oh no I've Chief got can. I've like, got to move okay. 6 feet through like this hallway before I get to the next set of stairs, better skateboard yeah. it. It's just annoying. like this is you could just run. It'd be so much faster, actually. Like in so many ways. And you're less likely to trip and fall. Uh but he's really good at skateboarding, so we need to show that off throughout the movie. The kid was mostly just like the plot device like crutch for Black Adam. Yeah. It was like the yeah, entire movie. Keeping him tethered to his humanity, which Basically, yeah. Fair. Um, I like his back and forth with Hawkman, although a lot of it seemed force. A lot of it seemed Hawkman. Uh, <sighs> Hawkman just is not that abrasive and con- like. Yes, he's like warrior first, like Thanagarian spirit, spirit, blah blah blah. Like he's like very like on edge, as if like you know they portrayed him in the movie, but it was a little too antagonistic for like zero reason. He was like, really we're here to spike. kill you or put you in a box forever. I know. And I they was were, like, they were just instantly you... at 100. Yeah, I was like, that's how Jeez. you started off negotiation was like either death or you're in a box forever. And this is based off of intel from like 
2,000 years ago, like 2,500 years ago, something like that. 5,000 years. Yeah, 5,000 yeah, 5, years. 5, years. Yeah. This is from Intel from like ancient stories that like, like, by probably the way, shouldn't trust. What do we know about Black Adam? He blew up a building once. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, that's he, it. He once destroyed the king a like temple building. thing, potentially. We don't even know that for true. Like, they didn't even like ask him. Yeah. Like, they didn't interrogate also him. Like, hey, by the way, old... did you do this? No. We don't even know 1,000%. That's what happened. And as we later find out in the movie, he didn't do the majority of the Black Adam stuff we thought Black Adam did back, or Teth Adam did back then. He was actually his son for the majority of that, like, run or whatever you want to call it. To jump back to Hawkman really quick, I kind of thought that just society was just going to get bodied the entire movie. Yes. I honestly did not think which they kind of did. I didn't think they honestly were even going to have that much screen time. And I said for a lot of months, like, I can't wait to see Black Adam snap uh, Dr. Fate's neck. He didn't. Dr. Fate still died, though, so I was pretty proud on guessing Dr. <laughs> Fate being, like, you know, biting the dust. I totally thought Black Adam was just going to body the Justice Society and they were going to be done. Yeah. I thought it was Hawkman. for sure going to be a Justice League thing where it's yeah. just like Superman too fast, too strong. The rest are just garbage and look at him go. Um, I for sure thought that too. Probably the biggest like thing with Hawkman to me was he, he didn't feel like Hawkman who's like centuries old, a uh, Thanagarian. He felt like a dude in a suit, you know, who had a mansion in Louisiana. Like he felt like a rich dude. It you felt know? That's my biggest problem with Hawkman. A little bit of both because like. I, I didn't feel him like the power scale is that he could go toe to toe with Black Adam for yeah. sure. He could never win, but he could go toe to toe. I think it, so. Also, like, like I think he the... just didn't. I don't know, dude. He just didn't seem like Thanagarian, powerful Hawkman. Didn't feel like yeah. Who, who needs I really wanted wings. to get like one good shot of him like catching Black Adam with the mace and just like, never hit Black Adam with the mace. Face off. And it sucks. I I really wanted like that, but I will say. Uh, Hawkman actually being able to go toe to toe with. I'm glad DC is like finally taking steps to rectify their power scaling, where like Doctor Fate being able to like hold Black Adam down for a bit using some like spells and stuff to like immobilize him, cause him pain, etc. Um, Adam Smasher being able to like again take Black Adam out for like a little tiny second. Um, did not realize that the tornado lady, what is her name? Cyclone. Cyclone, yeah. Did not realize that Cyclone played like a fairly big role in like a decent chunk, yeah. yeah uh her powers the way they showed her powers was really cool. I actually Looked really, awesome. really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I was like, this is really um, sweet. Cinematically, like they do slow mo kind of stuff like way cooler than a lot of like Marvel stuff. Um but yeah, like Cyclones powers adam smasher's powers but yeah like hawkman actually being able to like tank some huge hits that you know even wonder woman would have had a hard time shrugging off even bat like batman would have just straight up died um i mean absolutely they showed like black adam you know viewing the world in like flash kind of speed like superman kind right. of speed where everything's like real slow and he just like watches a bullet like hit him himself and like didn't even he I don't know like on the scale level of like is he as strong of like Superman uh there's like a 50 cal bullet that like clips him in the chin and doesn't even like cause like a skin ripple and I'm Entire, pretty sure at like, least Superman had that happen but maybe I'm wrong I can't remember yeah. exactly it's been so long since entire like second scene we see him when he's like getting out of that first temple after he's summoned and it's just this slow-mo like yeah eight I can't call it a fight where he no. kind of does the uh it's what I like do in Fallout in 4 scene. with mods when I just exactly. like freeze yeah. time and go mess with people like I'm it's just gonna the, put uh, a, a landmine in this guy's pocket I'm gonna right. pull like the trigger on this gun like seven times and then walk away I'm gonna throw this knife at this guy like yeah he's just like slowly yeah. doing all these things and then you just like it goes back to real time and all this carnage just happens immediately and that was just an absolutely insane you know, fight scene, which was beautiful to look at, too, which I super appreciated. No, I like the JSA. Overall, I'll say I like the JSA. I think every almost every line Hawkman spoke, I did hate. Whoever was writing Hawkman was bad. No, he was... For me. For me. I'm like, bro, shut up. Please, Hawkman. Like, yeah. Other, 
how do we discuss the terms jarring. of your imprisonment? And it's like, discuss the terms of his imprisonment? Yeah. Hawkman, you have lost every fight <laughs> that this guy. It's, it's just like, dude, Hawkman, yeah, it's just some of the worst lines ever. Adam Smash is fine. I, think I understand why Jay Solomon likes it. I, I don't know. There, so I'm like, pretty sure I know why. yeah, I don't know the story behind Adam Smasher, but like they getting, definitely uh, the normal Adam. That was cool. Seeing Al, that was that was yeah, neat. Henry Fonda, right? Henry, is that his name? Yeah, whoever the actor was. Yeah, I mean, he's a uh, famous actor. I should know yeah, his name, but the, I don't. The guy from uh, that played the Fonz. Um... Z? Is that the Fonz? Yeah. Why? Why am I hey. thinking Henry Fonda? Uh, but uh, Henry Winkler, yeah. Uh, he's been in a, a ton of stuff. He's just been in like an absolute yeah, ton of stuff. Been in it. But yeah, it was cool that he was like the old uncle. That's it's cool. Kind of getting like a second chance at like life or whatever. Ah. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, through his like nephew. grandson. Yeah, grandson. Yeah. Well, that's that was the weird thing. Is they're like he got his powers from his uncle, and I was like, wait, what? Like, but how? Like, how do you yeah. how do you get? powers from your uncle passed down to you is like some no, sort right of weird family tree situation going on yeah. um but yeah i still thoroughly enjoyed it thought it was great um and yeah i the thing i liked the most is that they didn't seem to underpower any one person that had powers there uh i did like no, that yeah like, you know hawkman comes in and he's like we're the justice society and the lady's like well, that's cool, but like you've never been here to help us before, and now you're trying to stop the guy that helps us. So, if you could stop doing that, that'd be even better, you know. Like, <laughs> it was a good movie. I will say the whole uh, the man in black sent you, like, again, we kind of said the kid was annoying. I did like that a little bit, although we all know there's only one man in black. Yeah. Yeah. Let's chill out there, Black Adam. Um, Amanda Waller instantly knowing, I don't want to, maybe I shouldn't jump to that scene, but like, okay. Demon guy was a little rough. We knew he was going to put on the crown. Like, obviously he was for sure going to put on the crown sometime in the movie. Then he becomes like just big CGI boss fight for a little bit. And there's like this stereotypical superhero sky laser that happens. And it's like, oh, but we, we picked off all those tropes. Neat. It was still a fine fight. I liked Black Adam sitting in the throne, feeling like, oh, I don't like it, and then destroying it. I was like, okay, yeah, that's fair, because that was like evil King Man throne, so I was cool with that. The scene where to escape his like prison in Task Force X place is really cool. That's a really cool slow-mo fight scene. Yeah. Uh, with like, like average size rock. The yeah, pebble. the weird CGI uh, of the rock being like an average human size instead of the massing hulk of a man very jarring is. like there's no very way he strange. liked being that right he was probably like you gross i can't believe we I, have to do this yeah, i hate it i didn't like it that's all yeah, i didn't like it. <laughs> that's all i can say like, oh. um but yeah like that that being said that scene where it's like no he's not just like good at fighting because he's super strong man dude um he's actually like super good at fighting because uh you know he's just like fighting for whatever his family or something um really cool scene yeah so i liked it I liked it a lot it, the end credit scene to me left a bunch but obviously i'm biased I hate superman i stand the guy and get we yeah. like henry cavill and all that stuff i again i echoed this to all you dc fans what has this superman done that we care about at all too fast we didn't have a chance to literally care about him at all before he died and then he just comes back to life and then shows the rest of the just sleep sucks at their jobs and they can't do anything without him basically all this superman has done and i just i can't be excited to see him because again we haven't treated him like he's actually superman or actually important whatsoever so like seeing him be like oh but superman could fight black adam and i'm like okay er, i guess but like he's not interesting he hasn't done anything that makes me actually care about him that's again all bias also really quick how did she know i get amanda waller's her job is to know everything but it's like i think i will update my name it's there's the title card for black adam and then it's instantly what's up black adam and it's like well how do you know that he tweet out hashtag call me black adam now like <laughs> how do you know that amanda waller he just talked to like three random people like you don't know them how did you be like, yo, what's up, Black Adam? Like, did you? And also, is that something we had to have someone say? Like, 
the viewer wasn't going to be able to be like, oh, yeah, it's called Black Adam. We call him Teth Adam the entire time. We see the big Black Adam logo. It's like, yeah, but we never said the words Black Adam right after each other. So let's just make sure we put that in the end of the movie so people know for sure he's called Black Adam. It's like, what? Fine. Um, weird. We're just ending ending bit. Yeah. Not do much for me, I guess. It's been a long time since somebody came around that made people sweat. Or so, I don't know. A Superman's like, so you make people uncomfortable. Yeah. You want to punch <laughs> you into space now. Like, okay, thanks, Henry. <laughs> Clark, pre- appreciate it, bro. Uh, we'll say, yes, DC, we get it. You own properties. I don't need to see a kid's room full of posters and then punch right. a Batman statue and stuff. We get it. You own properties. But uh, do you like, understand that you own those properties? Wrecked that DC? child's room. Yeah. It was kind it's of like, wild. You know, the best way to remind us that you own those properties is to actually do something with them that's good. Just so you know, DC. <laughs> instead of just having like posters and stuff. Maybe actually make, you know, a lot any of movies. Kind of, and yeah, content any kind of content. The, any kind like of content. Some sort of cinematic universe. Maybe <sighs> dip into like, I don't know, some of those HBO Max shows or whatever. Like I don't even know yeah. where they were released, but like I had one banger H like amazing banger. Peacemaker, awesome. Love it. A Let's try off, doing that. Yeah. A cut off like times. where Doom Patrol rolls into Kandar, Kandak, whatever the name of the town was, and yeah, they Kandak, just like yeah. see like Black Adam flying around fighting the like laser demon dude, and they're just like, nope, and then they just like keep driving. Would have been fine. Would have been yeah. lame, but would have been fine. Would be lame, yeah. Like I, at this point, I I don't care what they do. It's just you gotta do something. Yeah, I guess feel shred of connection and or threat of a plan because dc still like i have zero clue their plan might be i will say the zam killer also made me just be like what are they doing I do not care about who these villains are or what the entire plot of this next Shazam movie is so i just yeah, i don't know dc's uh they're doing their thing black adam again i oh, sorry started poo 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 pooing on dc here at the end bit did really enjoy black adam was very solid i was pleasantly surprised i will say it was also longer than i thought it was going to be it's hours i was like Again, Black Panther was also egregiously long, and it actually felt slow. So I will give Black Adam ops for being an average length movie that didn't actually feel slow. But I'm going to get into Black Panther. Yeah. So Black Adam, if you haven't seen it yet, what did you, you do listening to this entire portion of the podcast? What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you? We, we majorly ruined the entire movie for you, so I apologize. But that's on you, man. We gave you a warning, so it's not, that's not our fault. Yeah. Go see it. I wouldn't say like rewatch it in theaters, but I think it's a fine addition to the DCEU, if that's what we can call what's happening at DC right now. I am curious to see more of Black Adam, but I did really like this story as set up origin to modern times Black Adam that we got. I liked the Kandak Babylon esque ancient time city bustling. Like that was all really, really cool. Your gang stuff. Cool, cool, cool. Justice Society. I, I will say, I would like to see a Justice Society movie. Either a... I'd have to be an after Black Adam. Which is also another wild thing. We're going to send in a Justice Society. Quote, unquote. But, like, they haven't worked together. Like, Cyclone and Adam Smasher have never been on the Justice Society together before. It's just, like, Dr. Fate and Hawkman that are returning members. So, like, who was the old Justice Society? Yeah. I did no, like why that we, they, they we referenced, in, like, like, as yeah. if they had been on, like, you know, like a series an established of missions, team. blah, blah, blah. Um, but at the same time, it was, yeah. But I'm seriously I'm like, okay, so wait a second. Send two children and two guys that 100% know what they're doing against, like, this absolute powerhouse. Interesting. Interesting call, Amanda Waller, you know, like, be it for me to question your judgment, you know, Pierce Brosnan and everybody else, but, like, Dang, like a team that hasn't worked together is going to go after this guy. All right, let's see how it goes. Yeah, that's about as well as you get. I guess not you just thought. like a team that had uh, that that seemed really un Amanda Waller like when she was just no, like, right. I trust you when you say that you have a team that can handle this guy who is basically like an unkillable man with wings. Right. Like apparently, it's your only power. Well, to be fair, he said the powerhouse was actually Adam Smasher, and that. It was yeah. half true, I guess. Um, when Adam Smasher actually smashed something, he did stop Black Adam for a you know 
hot second yeah it, yeah hot second <laughs> like i'm on the clock we'll see how long it was definitely not over like a minute though like he'd him sit there for a, a second think about what he'd done wrong i guess i don't know <laughs> but yeah i mean hawkman and for fate being the strongest members like man we send in four dudes to take this guy out never you know maybe actually that is very amanda waller like because she does kind of just like sending out teams of people that have never worked together before on missions that are super important that's true that's, that's everything the suicide squad does the suicide so squad. maybe maybe yeah. that is all she does all is just be like, yeah I just yeah these like random people yeah they check the boxes like as if it's like a class-based shooter like all right yeah we got like a sharpshooter we got like a muscle guy we got like a smart person yeah okay send it full send it that's a good team okay amanda like first draft hero clicks team builder over here she's like yeah we got a prob we got the plex <laughs> yeah send it that's good oh they can beat a one-man army look we can make four attacks in one turn he can only make one like we're good we're fine it's like nah she got wrecked yeah, that was it's very, very interesting. Dr. Fate, I super enjoyed Dr. Fate. Everything to do with him was really, really cool. Pierce Brosnan absolutely killed it. I wish we could have seen a little bit more Dr. Fate, but I did really like his character. You could tell he was getting paid for that screen time, though. He was like, any chance yeah. I get, I'm working this helmet <laughs> off, baby. Taking the helmet off as soon as I can. Uh, any other bits you wanted to say a little bit about Black Adam, or are we pretty much wrapped it up? Um, man. No, I can't think of, like... Yeah, I can't think of like any specific scene that like really stood out past that to me. Yeah, right. No, well, and that yeah. was the uh, the Dial H Black Adam, Teth Adam, The Rock movie review next week. Maybe talk if Simeon watches Black Panther, we can talk about Black Panther, or sometime in the future. Maybe we won't like how we just didn't talk about Thor: Love and Thunder because we didn't see it for so long. That was okay. <laughs> it took forever. Yeah. That's okay. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And happy trails. Real this time. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.